Kia ora bros and welcome to VDB TV. I'm your host VDB and today we have a 5v5 practice for the tournament on Erebos Lakes version 1.0. This, These guys here on the blue team are a um, established team. That's, that's what I was trying to say. Established team here and these guys are just uh, random puppies. They, the community will know each other like pretty well so anyone over 30 like generally know each other but these guys are actually a team who play together and the first thing you may notice is the shear sliders are all set very low so they move them around depending on what they need and they normally have them quite low so if anyone lags behind they can shear resources so let's get right into it for the blue team we got Ragnar Armada we got Alisar Armada Melody Cortex Aircraft we got Trash Panda Armada bots, and Jazz Cash Armada bots. Looks like it's bots and vehicles here on the top, uh, LSR and Ragnar. For the red team, we got Lem Rompy bots for Cortex. We got Greg, he's the Cortex Air. Eight Nair, <clears throat> we got Vehicle Plant for Armada. Oh, yeah, Armada. We got bots for Cortex, random variable, and Coochie bots for Armada. Looks like the Greg's already shared a transport, so that's what I mean. Like, even though these guys are technically randoms, they they all know each other and work well together. Uh, everyone knows how to play once you hit sort of 30 and up. Looks like there's a bomber out already. A bomber out this quick is like not very usual, and that is a product of having these energy sliders and metal sliders so low, because it means as soon as you go over, you just share it to your teammate. So you can do things like get an early bombing run out. And this is going to help a lot. It's like having a, a raiding party come straight to your base instantly. And no one's really expecting it, so you, no one's obviously got anti-air. The air player doesn't even have anti-air up. So there's two transport ships here. Look at that. Random variable gets anti-air up straight away. Nice, and that's just put him right behind, so Nier is, Nier is down on energy now. Nice, really, really put air back there. Random variable didn't get put back quite as far. Look at that, it was just a nice quick assault straight away. I love seeing uh, different strategies like this from top tier players. Just shows you that there's just a bunch of different combinations you can actually do. Wonder why they're pinging here. Alright, looks like Geothermal's already going to be coming up for LSR, and that's going to help the entire team with their energy. Do these guys have their thermal? No, not yet. Looks like Rompy's taking that north side here. He's going to look to defend this. Where did I see that other transport aircraft? It was too, maybe it got taken out. So Jazz Cash is getting those pawns out. It's gonna be some grunts and uh, grunts ticks and pawns here to try and stop them. Looks like pink and yellow are gonna be doing this one, variable and coochie. Ragnar's gonna have to take this entire side here. Looks like two Hercules have been shared here. Ragnar's got one and Jazz has got one. Looks like Jazz is gonna drop here, that's risky. I wonder where Ragnar's gonna go. These pawns putting in some work. They will be able to hold this ramp though. There's no way these pawns are gonna be able to take this ramp. Where's Ragnar going? Oh, Ragnar's dropping here. Yeah, okay, so the blue team's pushing hard here. See, there's quite a few spectators in this game. Yeah, so this pawn's gonna try and push up that hill and get cleared straight away. Coochie, going to the south side, that's going to be a good little pickup for him. A little bit of extra income. Jazz Cash lands and takes out a bunch of pawns for Rompy. Backed up by some blitzes from Ragnar. Looks like Ragnar's going to go and land with Jazz, so it looks like they're going to set a stronghold here, a strong point. It's a very dangerous position for the red team to have enemies in got the high ground here, it's very hard to 
very hard to assault up this, these ramps. But these two commanders are out of position. Well, looks like Coochie's going all the way forward to here. Or like to like this position. Very, very risky for Coochie. Very risky for Coochie. He's going to be a little out of position. Almost as risky as these two guys. Getting a bot lab up straight away. They do have a anti-air tower just in case. Two commanders are very strong. It's very hard for T1 to kill two, two commanders this early in the game. This is just an insane amount of action already this game. So it looks like the red team has taken this section. So the battle lines look crazy. It's like this. Uh, well, let me draw that again. I'll start here. <laughs> Excuse me. Yeah, though, that's a crazy battle line there. So it looks like Coochie's going to be holding this. He's going to be putting that pressure on the south side, drawing Trash Panda down here. So even though this is undefended, it's not likely that the blue team's going to push through here. What's happening over here? This needs to be punished before they can get an actual stronghold in here. I'd say orange uh, near... So orange and yellow... Uh, orange and yellow. Nier and Rompy need to work in a team effort to take this position, or even, or even like around here somewhere. You know they need they need to take that hill back. Looks like T2 is coming up for the blue team. This is dangerous. If if this doesn't get it, like if they get attacked before this gets up, they're probably going to die. But if this gets up, that it's very very hard to take that once that gets up. You can see it's actually building because although he, they are technically stalling out on energy, the slide is very low for his team. So everybody's stalling out on energy. Everybody's technically building that T2 bot lab right now. Stronghold's getting stronger by the second. Yeah, there you go. It looks like Orange is building units now. Might be a little bit too little too late. This is about to come up. They still have to build the units from it. The T2 units take a while to build. Though they've got four construction turrets here. Oh, it looks like it's going to be a two-pronged attack. They need to go. They need to push on this side at the same time. You can't hit two separate times. They don't see the commander, they see him now. Oh, that was a perfect D-gun. Ragnar clears the south side of just the commander. Looks like they're getting a fat boy out. That's gonna pop very soon, that's insane. Oh my god. Oh my god. He went down to 1% HP for a second there. Oh my god, that's madness. That was very close. Now the fat boy's out, this is gonna be very, very hard to take down. That boys is so strong against T1 units. Oh, and there goes all the Janices. You can see I was spectating this. I was actually live casting this game. <laughs> and my uh, microphone wasn't plugged in properly. So it was all just silent. <laughs> so it looks like Melody is just getting some, some anti-air out just in case. Coochie's pushing hard here, he's got T2 himself. All they have to do is try and hold this line here. If they can hold this line, um, they, they should be good. But if Coochie breaks through and starts destroying all this stuff, then it's, it's gonna be GG. Looks like they're getting welders out. This fat man's super out of position, but there's no army here to defend against him. He's not out of position because he's got the welders coming in behind him. So the good counter for Poochie might break through here. Crash Panda with perfect D guns. A little bit more spread on Poochie's units would have been nice there. Damn, bad luck. Um, yeah, so a good counter for Fat Boys is lots of weak units, like lots of cheap fast units because you can only shoot, look how slow he shoots. But the thing with that is a 
good counter to lots of weak units is welders. So that's a good combination they've got here. Maybe some anti-air coming in just in case. Yeah, it's not looking good for the red team. Kuchi's been driven back now, so Melody and Trash Panda have managed to hold this. Oh, spectators drawing things. Uh, bombing run coming in here. Didn't get too much. But... The air player pretty much goes down here. There's a lot of income. That's GG, I think. It's not with the hounds coming out too. Not punishing this is the red team's main problem there. Uh, I think Coochie did very well on the south side here, putting that pressure on. Uh, I feel like... I feel like Aiden could have... Um, oh, sorry, Nier could have maybe had a little bit more impact. Maybe get some more units out, because didn't do too much. Maybe if he had some more units out earlier, he could have assaulted this position earlier, or even assaulted this position with more units when he did. Um, that was very, very well played for the blue team there. You see those tactics of having that slider lower and just coordinating as a team really help. Can't wait to see them in the actual 5v5 tournament go against a, another coordinated team. See how other teams are actually going to band together to play against these types of strategies. Oh, GG guys, I'll see you in the next one.